What's up, nerds? I'm Cup of Joey, and welcome back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. You know the drill. Most of these are people getting back on their bosses that have told them to do something in a way that isn't going to work, but there's the odd other story of MC as well. Let's have a look. Panda wings? Okay, you got it. I worked as a cook at a train restaurant that had a wing night where you could get a pound of wings at a discounted price. We didn't actually weigh the wings, our specs had 8 wings to a pound, 4 drums and 4 flats. One night, a table comes in and everyone orders a pound of wings. A little after a while the wings go out, the server comes back a little flustered and explains that there had been a complaint. Apparently, one of the guys at the table complained that it was obvious that he didn't get pounds because it would be a huge coincidence if everyone's pounds led to the same number of wings on each plate. He insisted that the server go and weigh these already discounted wings to make sure he's getting what he paid for. So we weighed it. Sure enough, it was not a pound. It was a pound and a half. We did tell the server to bring it out and tell him he's getting more than a pound. She says, frick no, he paid for a pound. He's going to get what he paid for and threw two of his wings in the garbage and re-weighed all the food. Still over. Throws another one out. Bang on one pound of wings. So she brings out his five wings and calmly tells the gentleman, here are your wings, sir. You were right. There was more than a pound there. So we threw the other ones out. Good catch. When they ordered the second round, he didn't complain that everyone got eight wings to a pound. Here, OP put in a little bit of edits, just a few things clarifying a, a couple of things to do with their workplace and the wing policy here and there. It's not necessarily relevant, but if you want to read it, then feel free to pause it here. This is another one of those malicious compliance stories that I get a special amount of enjoyment from because, my goodness... There really is a certain kind of low from people that will treat people who are serving them like crap. You know, people who are below them in the social chain or people who are serving them specifically. And I don't get why anybody would, you know, do that around people who are giving you food. Because unless you want, you know, a snot spit special, that's the way to go about it. And I know that they're not supposed to because of hygiene, but you know. I wouldn't want to freaking risk it, you know, I would have won trouser soup. I'm glad that they didn't go the good customer service route and said, you know what, you got extra, have a nice day. I'm glad that they were just like, nah, we made it a pound. Here's your freaking pound. <laughs> the problem was is that he assumed bad intent, he assumed others clearly. Clearly they're ripping me off somewhere as opposed to, well, you know, I mean, and apparently they're cheap anyway, even for what he got, so, <laughs> wow. Well done for uh, slamming the nail in that coffin there, mate. At 17, I got a nurse suspended. I was telling a friend the story and he told me to post it here. So in high school, I worked as a certified nurse's assistant at a local nursing home. I only worked on the weekend because my parents wanted me to focus on school during the week. Anyone in the health field knows you cannot work with the elderly when you are sick because some elderly people can die from the common cold. When I was 17, I got really, really sick. I got sick on a Tuesday with a light cough, and by Friday, I was going into 10-minute coughing fits. The next Monday was Labor Day. My regular doctor was closed all weekend. My parents decided we couldn't wait till Tuesday, and I went to ER. I had a bad case of bacterial pneumonia. For those who don't know, regular pneumonia usually results from a bad case of the flu or another illness, but a perfectly healthy person could be in Walmart, for example, or walk by a person with bacterial pneumonia who sneezes and breathes it in. It's extremely contagious. I was admitted to hospital and hooked up to tubes. Turns out I was also dehydrated from being so sick. Around midnight, I realised I needed to call in since I won't be able to work the next few days. So I called the nurse's desk and told the RN on duty, I guess that means registered nurse on duty, that I had been diagnosed with pneumonia and won't be able to work this weekend. And most likely the weekend after, due to the possibility, I will still be contagious. She told me, If you wanted a three-day weekend, you shouldn't have volunteered to work. You can't fake a cough to get out of work in the real world, sweetheart. Then hung up. I asked my dad what I should do. He took my phone and took a picture of me in the hospital beds, and then we got a side note for the doctor and took a picture of that. He then told me to email those to the director of nursing for the facility. I did that and also told her what the registered nurse had told me. Thing is, at this facility, any calls through the nurses station are recorded to protect the facility from lawsuits and such or to protect the residents from negligent carers. 
she was on record telling me what she did. When I returned two weeks later, I had learned that she had been suspended for eight weeks without pay for negligence. And then edit, as there were a lot of people asking me how this was malicious compliance. During my certified nurses assistant classes, we are told to protect the residents no matter what, even if it costs our positions. I went over many heads directly to the director of nursing, which have could have got me fired. First of all, damn, like what a real cruel way to respond to somebody who's got freaking pneumonia. Okay, so let's just for sake of argument, pretend that OP here was faking it. That still would have been the completely unacceptable reaction because you have to assume that everything's serious. Even if, like, she did the whole Mean Girls kind of I'm sick <laughs> thing. I Like, even so, then you still take that seriously just in case because, like they said, you know, the, the residents are far more important than, you know some teenager that might be slacking off for the day. Also, I really don't understand how people are unwilling to show basic kindness, I guess. Like, why the hell are you going into the profession of nursing? Why the hell are you going into something where you have to, you know, show care and a bedside manner and be gentle and kind and compassionate? Why are you going into a job where you, where you have to do all those things, where you treat people like that, that sorry, sweaty kind of <laughs> attitude? It's just, it was a really Karen-esque way that I read it as well. And it's just, it, it's just so cruel with the whole holier than thou. Oh, you know, I feel like if they didn't have, you know, or rather the nurse didn't have all of these very poor opinions, either on youth or just on this person in general, that they would have been such an ass about them having freaking bacterial pneumonia. Which, you know, unless you're trying to wipe out the residents, probably isn't the best idea. Maybe she just had some freaking scam going on where she got all of them to put her name in the will. I mean, I don't know. And seriously, there's just something so low about treating someone like that, of assuming the worst. I mean, even in situations where you really need to assume, like, the safest freaking option. Like, it's far better to let somebody have the day off when they're pulling a sickie than to force somebody in that can freaking kill the residents, you know? There was just a complete, utter lack of perspective and a lack of humanity and kindness. Like, that's what gets me, is that it's just cruel. Like, it's just nasty to assume that as someone. Like, why would you just have such a poor view of someone? It's just, I don't know. I, I feel like there might have been, like, a slight bit of, oh, it's because they're a lazy teenager and te teenagers can't possibly get sick. It's not anything that happens, you know? Uh, it seems it seems like getting rid of the nurse was probably the best idea because if that's the kind of attitude that she has, then she really shouldn't be caring for people for a living. The dozen donuts I've been bringing in every Monday doesn't count as my snack day contribution? <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to rectify that. Back in high school around 2010, I used to work the closing shift at Dunkin' Donuts on Sunday nights. Per company policy, I could box up two dozen donuts to bring home with me before throwing the rest out. One dozen went with my dad to work in the morning, one came with me to school, specifically my Spanish class, which was a pretty small and pretty tight-knit group. Tends to happen when a lot of the coursework is practicing conversations with each other. True that, I'm, I, yeah, I definitely relate to that as I'm somebody, my, my background is in languages, as I've mentioned a few times if you follow the channel. Only difference for me was is that because my university was just so posh, it was just like there were so many rich kids there because it was one of those, you know, high fancy ones. I was like one of the common scum that was brought in as a token. And yeah, you, you have to like arrange so many times to just meet up and talk <laughs> like that's it. And I managed to make friends even though we, we were very, very different people. So I can definitely understand how that happens. Anyway, enough of my rambling about my past and onto the story. This practice of bringing donuts every Monday sparked an idea in one of my classmates' heads. She's added this story. Since it's so nice to have donuts once a week, we should do a weekly snack day where everyone can bring something in. They decided this would be on Thursday, and I just said I'd continue bringing in donuts every week on Monday as my contribution. Everyone was okay with this, except for Anne. No, no, no. This snack day was Thursday, and if you aren't going to bring in a snack on a Thursday, then you aren't welcome to participate. I was pretty pissed off, but what can you do? It's only one snack one time. Then I got to thinking about it. 
I was only required to bring a snack. Not something sweet or delicious or even palatable, as long as it was edible and then it counted. My next closing shift, I grabbed an extra empty dozen box. I went to the store on Wednesday night and got a five pound bag of potatoes. I washed them and put them right in the box and dropped off the box early in the morning to my Spanish classroom so nobody would get wise to the actual contents. Apparently, the earlier classes had seen the box sitting on the shelf and had told our class that we had donuts. Everyone was excited. I brought them up and put them on top of the elbow projector. I, I've never heard of an elbow projector. I'm sorry, I'm just picturing a freaking Sesame Street <laughs> thing coming from the mouth, but okay. I brought them up and put them on top of the elbow projector, trying my best not to betray the extra heft. They all scurried up excitedly, and Anne herself was the one to open the box. A blank expression turns to raw frustration. You were supposed to bring a snack today, she protested. I did, I said, walking up to the box and grabbing a potato, biting into it while making direct eye contact with her. You don't have to have any if you don't want. Everyone shuffled back to their desks and Anne tried desperately to grasp a new argument out of thin air, but it was not coming. I finished my potato triumphantly freaking hell and brought the rest home for my mum after school. The box was checked and she could not try to exclude me from the weekly snack day anymore. Everyone else in the class who thought she was a bit over the top thought the antic was hilarious after they got over the initial disappointment. Edit, the story is real. If you can't fathom a teenager eating a potato raw out of spite, then I don't know what to tell you except you should get out more. It's the fact that they ate the whole potato. The whole freaking potato! <laughs> <laughs> like, not just a bite. Like, that's what I thought it would be like. Oh, you know what? They're going to throw it away. But no, they just eat the whole freaking potato. This is my snack. You got a problem with it, piss off. <laughs> so I know that I'm stating the flaming freaking obvious here, but this was definitely all Anne's fault. Like, the fact that it was all... Okay, so let's let's acknowledge the fact as well that this... <laughs> the whole idea of this random freaking snack day only ever came about because OP was bringing in the freaking donuts on a Monday in the first place. And Krispy Kreme donuts, or rather Dunkin' Donuts, you know, I mean, yeah, but come on, Dunkin' Donuts, they're like freaking fancy, you know, they are like proper, like, let me check, I, I did I get, oh no, it is Dunkin' Donuts, I, I, I find them very hard to tell the difference between, I'm sorry, you know, it, it's all, it's all just fried yummy dough to me, but Dunkin' Donuts are freaking fancy, right, if you, if I was at school and then every Monday I got a freaking Dunkin' Donut, I would be so happy with that, I wouldn't be going, oh, let's all have a snack day, you know, it was just, like, why, why would you ruin a good thing? Like, there was clearly a good thing going on with the donuts coming in. Everyone was enjoying that. But no, because you want to create some freaking arbitrary rule. It's now ruined for everyone. But oh my goodness. The potato. Like, what I was expecting was that if they said, oh, it has to be on the Thursday. I thought that they were actually going to keep the donuts, let them go stale. And then bring them in on the Thursday and be like, well, you wanted these today instead of Monday. I don't know what to tell you. You know, something like that. Was absolutely not expecting them to just put in a load of uncooked freaking potatoes and then to eat a whole one just out of spite. That I freaking admire. I really do. I got, oh, I got a lot of time for this person. That was absolutely brilliant. And of course, that hopefully means that Anne will not complain or try and make people follow these stupid random rules as well that she created for absolutely no freaking reason that, no, you have to bring it on Thursday. Like, that is just so jobsworthy and control freaky. It's just absolutely unnecessary. You're just ruining a good thing because you want to be the leader of it. I have met so many people like Anne. She just seems so freaking awful and... Hey, I mean, I really, really like that it was rectified the, <laughs> the correct way. And it also shows to Anne that you just can't go around bossing people around and telling them that they can't do, like, a nice thing for their classmates. I mean, come on. If you enjoy watching my content, then please consider throwing me a few pennies down at my Kofi down below. If you would like to just buy me a coffee, you can throw me as little as £3 down below. If not, thanks for just enjoying my content, and I hope you enjoy the episode. That's it for this episode of Our Session Malicious Compliance. I have to say that my favourite ones are always the ones where it's some kind of manager or boss that are having something thrown in their face because of their poor managerial skills. Like, those are my absolute favourites, so I thought these ones were neat. And as I say at the end of every episode, if you enjoyed hearing from this subreddit or would like to hear from any other subreddit, then do let me know in the comments. And until then, I will see you all next time.